agentic systems are top of mind right now to automate processes. However, for that, your agents need access to your company data, and usually in real time. Likewise, you also still want to have a human in the loop to make the final decision. And for that, your human operators also need access to your company data, usually through internal tools, where they can read data to gain insights, but also make updates to the system. And that's where Lakebase comes in. Lakebase is your transactional data storage for your data and AI apps, and you can build some really cool stuff with it. My name is Andre, and I'm a developer advocate at Databricks, and today I want to give you a complete walkthrough of Lakebase, what it is, when you would want to use it, and how it looks like to use Lakebase today. Let's get started. First things first, Lakebase is actually two things, because why not? First of all, it is a new architecture for an OLTP database, but then it is also a new service on Databricks that builds on that architecture. What makes the Lakebase architecture special is the deep integration with the Lakehouse. Traditionally, there's a gap between your OLAP system and your OLTP systems, where data has to cross system boundaries, network boundaries, and sometimes even cloud boundaries to get moved from one system to another. And that's just complicated to get right. You need custom pipelines and synchronization mechanisms, have to figure out security, and there's no surprise that most companies report that their employees do not have access to all the data they need. It's difficult. Lakebase is meant to be another tool in your Databricks toolset to address this issue. With Lakebase, data stays in one unified system, your Databricks account. With Unity Catalog, you can decide who has access, and with synchronized tables, you can decide what data is synced between your Lakehouse and your lake bases. Next, let's talk a little bit deeper about the architecture behind Lakebase. It's not built on a new database management system. Instead, it's built on Postgres, and more specifically, a serverless Postgres architecture. So let's see what that exactly means. If you're an application developer, you're already familiar with Postgres. It's a battle-tested, open source, and very popular OLTP database with a thriving community of contributors, users, and extensions. Take PG Vector for example. With PG Vector, you can add vector search capabilities to your Postgres database just by adding an extension. And with that, you can do semantic search over your data, which is perfect for use cases like RAG. Postgres is quickly becoming the most popular OLTP database. Just like Git for version control, Postgres will be the default for building applications. But Lakebase is not just Postgres. It's serverless Postgres. One of the most fundamental principles of the lake house is the separation of storage and compute. And serverless Postgres is bringing that to Postgres databases. With the separation of storage and compute and serverless Postgres, we can enable some really awesome features for an amazing developer experience, like database branching, point in time recovery, and even time travel queries. We'll have more to share about these features very soon. All right, so when would you want to use Lakebase? Lakebase is ideal anytime you want to build a transactional system on top of your data and AI stack. And there's three use cases that come top of mind for me. The first one is if you want to build internal tools, right? You want to make data accessible to your coworkers throughout your company, and you want to give them access to a system where they can actually make changes as well. That's when you would add Lakebase on top of the Lakehouse. But you can also use it for agent memory and state if you want to give your agents a low latency data storage to access during their workflows. And finally, for real-time feature serving for your ML models. Let's say you want your models to have access to real-time data, then you can also consider using Lakebase. All right, let's walk through an example how using Lakebase looks like today on Databricks. I have a fake company here called Casper's Kitchen. And Casper's Kitchen is a ghost kitchen company invented by my coworker Nick. And what the setup is, is that we have data coming in from our order system where people make orders. And then we have drivers pick up the deliveries and drive them to our customers. And in Databricks, that data is then organized and then channeled through a refund recommender agent. So that agent looks through all the order details and decides if we should do a partial or full refund of the order, but we don't want the agent to make the final decision here. We want to have a human in the loop. That's why Casper's Kitchen also comes with an internal tool, a Databricks app where we display all the recommendations by the agent, and then a human can take action and either apply or deny those uh, recommendations. Let's see how Casper's Kitchen could use Lakebase to build an internal tool for refund management. All right, so now we are in the Casper Kitchen workspace. And the first thing I want to show you is this model serving endpoint we have here, Casper's refund agent. So this agent, we can send it 
event data, and then the agent decides if there should be a partial or full refund for a fulfilled order. Uh, so imagine an order arrives very late to our customer, then the agent may decide that it's better to give a partial refund to keep the customer happy. So we're using this Casper's refund agent endpoint in one of our pipelines. So if we go to our pipelines, we can see there's a refund recommender stream. And if we go to the tasks, we can see there's just one task. And if we look at the source code for this one, we can see that we are here defining a get chat completion Lambda function where we make a request to that model. And then down below, we can see that we are piping all incoming events through the stream here. Um, but we filter out only the events that have been already delivered because there shouldn't be a refund uh, decision made on orders that are still pending. Maybe the kitchen is still working on them, right? So only for delivered events, we're then calling our get chat completion function. And the agent response is then stored in the refund recommendations uh, table. So let's look at that table next. So if you go to our catalog and look for Casper's, you can see here we have a recommender schema with two tables and one of them is the refund recommendations. And if you look at the sample data, this is how it looks like. For each incoming delivered order, the agent will at some point make a decision. And you can see here that the past few decisions have been made to not give any refund, which is very good for our business because it means all orders have been within reasonable delivery times. At least that's what the agent decided to recommend. And you can also see the agent gives a reason here uh, why the decision was made that way. So there should not be a refund for this order ID because the order was not late. That looks great to me. What's really exciting is this PG recommendations table over here. Um, if you over over this here, over this label, you can see it says it's a synced table. And the source of the sync table is the refund recommendations table that we just took a look at. And it's then saving it in the Casper's refund manager. And that's a lake-based database instance. So if you click on this one, we end up in the compute tab under database instances. And this is our lake-based instance. Here we can see our configuration. Uh, we also have access to the connection details if we want to and can review the catalog. So if you jump to the catalog, we are back at the catalog. So if I look for Casper's again, you can see we have Casper's and then the Casper's refund manager. And that's a catalog for the Postgres database here. And PG recommendations pops up here as well. So this is the synchronization, what we call reverse ETL from the lake house to the lake base instance. And here, uh, if you look at the sample data, that's exactly the same data we also see in the, um, in the refunds recommendations table. So here we see all the agent responses again, but now we have access to this in our Postgres instance for low latency queries and to make quick updates to that data. All right, you can also see here's a refunds decision table. And this one is just a traditional Postgres table um, where we save the decisions that have been made by the human operator. So the human operator has access to a tool where they can review the agent recommendations and then act on them. And any time a human makes a decision, the decisions end up in this table. So next, let's take a look at that application. So if you go into compute, you can see here lake-based Postgres. This is where we saw the lake-based instance that we reviewed earlier, but we also have an apps tab. And here we have a Casper's refund manager application. And if you click on this link, this is what the application looks like. And you can see here, uh, are listed all the suggested uh, refund recommendations of the agent. And you can see we already took actions on a few of them, but there's one left where we haven't taken an action just yet. So what we can do here is click apply, uh, review uh, the amount we want to refund, decide if this is a partial or full refund. Here we can just follow the recommendation from the agent and say, uh, this decision was made by me and apply. And just like that, we have read data from the lake base and then wrote and updated data back to the system and persisted the data in Postgres. Awesome. Just like that, we reviewed how data is moving through the Databricks platform until we are synchronizing it from the lake house into a lake base instance from which we then have access from internal tools to read and write that data. Thanks for joining me in learning about lake base. If you want to learn more and try it out yourself, check out the guide how to use Lakebase as a transactional data layer for your Databricks apps.